I think we're good. I think we're good. All right. Alrighty. Well, I feel like I'm I'm required to introduce you because you know that's what you're supposed to do for interviews and conversations and stuff like that. But one thing I I actually do honestly pride myself in is not being professional. <laughs> I think most of the people who watch my channel know exactly who you are. Uh, I do love that there's a lot of overlap between the communities like with you and Turning the Table and John Denton and all these different, you know, different channels and stuff like that. But for those of you who don't know, we have Path from Path Reacts on for a conversation. I'm very excited. I'm very happy. How are you doing, Path? It's good to see you again. I'm doing well. I'm I'm doing great, actually. I already gave this update on Patreon, but like my iron levels are up. I have a good amount of caffeine in my system today, and you know, doing doing pretty well. Yeah, and day. you've got your apartment kicking. I see you're running your blue light today. I am. Yes. <laughs> it, it goes through like what you've got like a green and a red. Oh, yeah, you can like press your much, buttons. Huh? You can also. Yeah, it's like a little remote. You can also create your own colors with this wheel. Oh, but, cool. Um, Very I cool. Like the blue. Yeah, the blue does look nice. It does look nice. And let's see, you've got you've got Igor back there, Good Kid Mad City, Steppers, Pimp Butterfly, Flower Boy. I don't know that middle top. Uh, this is Marina and the Diamonds, Electra Heart. It's the 10-year anniversary, I think, that came out, so had to get it. Nice. But, yeah, it's basically a Kendrick and Tyler shrine. This is also Tyler. This is also Tyler. Uh, this is Animal Crossing. This is Maddie on. But, <laughs> yeah, slowly putting my personality traits on the on the walls here. Yeah, that's cool. I honestly, I get a little jealous because every now and then I'll watch some people's channels and I'm like, man, they got like the cool records in the background, or maybe they got some cool Legos in the background. I have a little cool. Let's see if I can do it. This is so weird trying to do it. Like, right there. Keep going up. Right there. That is a Lego Groot, if you can see it. Oh, Just, I can see it now that you mention it. Before, yeah. I would not be able to, to put it together. but He's just hanging out, saying hello, just like Slurpee. Huh. Oh, so this is something else Slurpee does, too. I'll feed him, and then I assume it's a trait of this fish. And then he starts digging around in the rocks. <laughs> I don't know what he's looking for. Looking for more food? I don't know. <laughs> but apparently, these fish are notorious. Like, if you have... Uh, real plants growing these this type of fish is notorious for ripping them out they just rip them out oh my god yeah that's why that's why his tank is so bare every now and then it looks a little sad and my wife will say slurpee needs plants i'm like he's just gonna rip them out oh yeah okay <laughs> yeah. did you actually try it or are you just are you just going under the assumption we used to have um like the fake ones and he would stir around and eventually because they have like this little like pod thing that you're supposed to bury to keep them submerged and you know, they'd kind of like fall over or float up or whatever <laughs> yeah anyway well i suppose let's see where should we start i mean it's it's cool to have you on i mean you and i have been messaging fairly common back and forth for a while it's fun to it's fun to have cross uh, so i'm going to say this a lot completely unintentionally i'm not even trying to make fun but we cross paths <laughs> And it's just neat. You know, it's neat to see someone kind of going through the same thing I'm going through and exploring music and then watching your channel blow up, which it is blowing up, in my opinion. I think I think actually you're past me now in terms of subscribers. And I'm not even close to being jealous. Of course, not pff, me. No, of course not. <laughs> of course not. Yeah, it is. It is very interesting, especially since I feel like this is such an like a new niche for me. It's not something that I intended on jumping into, but seeing other people do the same thing and kind of have a hang on what they're listening to or what they're doing next. It's so interesting um, to see what what I could do next, you know? Yeah. Oh, well, I, I mean, add to it. And that's a great, I think that's a great place to start. Honestly, I mean, what kind of pushed you into making a couple of videos and just trying it out? What was, what got you going? Good question. I actually don't know. I was sick with COVID and I was really bored and Dawn FM came out and I was like, I'm just gonna, I want to start listening to more music or music that I don't really listen to right now and kind of film my reaction, see how it goes. But at the time I was also terrified of YouTube's copyright policies. So I had so many cuts in that video, so many, like, I can't even bear to watch it because it was <laughs> just so all over the place. But um, after that video came out, like, 
YouTube already started pushing me toward all of these other music reactors, and I was like, oh, they're including a lot more music. Um, so I can kind of calm down a little bit on that, I think. And um, I thought it was really interesting because I don't really watch reaction channels, or I didn't until I was kind of thrown into it. So. <laughs> yeah. I, th I think what, you know, the first thing I noticed about your channel, because you started popping up a while ago on my feed, because I do watch reactions, not as much as I used to, just because I'm busier now, but yeah. <clears throat> I've always enjoyed reactions. There's something special about it, and it's, it's really fun for me being somebody who does watch it, but then now does it and gets the comments coming the other way, because I kind of almost experience this full circle of, I'm watching somebody hear this song for this first time and I want to see that experience and like, oh yeah, here, here comes that, you know, the drop or, or whatever, right? Those lyrics. And then now I get to, every now and then I get these messages from people. My favorite comment is always, I felt like I heard the album again for the first time. Yeah. It's so great because that, we only get that one time. So if I can somehow recreate that for people, I think that's amazing. Yeah, and actually, um, I didn't start watching them until I did my Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers reaction. And then I was like, I have to know if everyone else cried at the same song that I cried to. So then I started looking up other people's reactions. And um, yeah, pretty much every album since then, I was like, I just want to I just want to compare and see um, if this affected them in the same way that it affected me or if they picked up on something that I didn't pick up on. That's always very interesting. Like my favorite part of the first couple videos that I did, which were all the weekend, because that's all anyone ever suggested to <laughs> yeah. me, but was like um, them giving me lore or like background information that I was not privy to before <laughs> listening to it and just getting filled in on all the little details that I missed. Um, so yeah, it's, it definitely has, or I definitely understand now the reason why people watch them and seek them out because now I'm in that headspace and now I want to. <laughs> so. Yeah. You know, it is cool too with, with, especially with us and the community of people that surround these kind of channels and begin to interact with them and stuff. <clears throat> it is so cool to get some of those layers of context where if you were just to listen to the album on your own, you wouldn't know and you would just go, oh, yeah. this was cool. And you wouldn't realize no, this came after whatever happened or this song is about this specific thing and that's why it's such a big deal and blah, blah, blah. Like Exactly. It, it makes it so much better in terms of enjoying the music and, you know, with the, the crying part. <laughs> I, I do that too. I'll, I'll, uh, like, first of all, it sucks because it's like, man, I haven't heard, I haven't heard this song. I don't know. I haven't heard it yet. You know, like I get all ramped up and I want to hear it sometimes. But then I go, okay, no, it's coming. I'll, I'll get to it. I'll listen to it. And then as soon as I do, yeah, I do the same thing. I run over and see like if Kevin cried at the, from turning the tables, if, if he cried at the same part that I cried and, and if they cried right at the part where I cried. And then every now and then it's funny because they'll cry at someone else will cry at a part where I was like, oh no, I was fine there. And then the part where I just completely broke down, they're stone face cold. Yeah. It's like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> yeah, I found that too. It's so interesting because everyone has their own like uh, preconceived notions or something that has affected them in their life that are, the music is totally drawing from and uh, it's so interesting how it affects everyone so differently yeah but it's, it's also cool to be a part of that environment um, that other people can come see like ours maybe compare ours uh, against each other and see what we got but yeah, yeah. just so <laughs> so weird too <laughs> what I love about your channel and this is what made me just go oh brilliant Brilliant. And we actually talked about this whenever it was a couple months ago when we were chatting was I feel like your channel is kind of the natural evolution of reaction content in that it starts out with people just listening to songs and kind of bopping along and pretending like they like it. Maybe they like it. Maybe they don't. I'm always very suspicious. Like when I watch, especially if it's a new yeah. person on my feed, I'm like, I'm just watching. Like, is this real? Are you actually doing the thing? And then I felt like, oh, okay. This, and actually it was Igor. It was the Igor album. I listened to, I did the reaction to the album. I wasn't really into it. And people said, no, 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 no. You gotta, you gotta understand it from this point of view, this context, you gotta go back and listen to it from this mindset. And so I did go back and listen to it a couple more times. And then I was like, oh, you know, I need to make a video explaining how I feel about it now. Now that I've listened to it with, with more understanding and all this other stuff. And so that's how I got into my whole additional thoughts thing. And then you, 
came along and said, well, what, and I don't even think this was on purpose. I just, you just naturally did it of recording your reaction, including community comments, which is brilliant in my opinion. And then also kind of solving the problem of the copyright issue and having to cut music out and then replacing it with your voiceover that's essentially additional thoughts that you got while you were experiencing that album. And I was just like, Path is fucking brilliant. It's brilliant, in my opinion. Like, I'm just oh, like, oh you. my God. Because to me, it's so obvious. But you just took all those pieces and just put them together perfectly. Yeah, I mean, it, it didn't just all come out at once. I think, like, I've been thinking in my head, maybe I should create some sort of compilation of all the moments that have, like, uh, brought me to my decisions in the format that I have now. So like uh, the weekend video, the first weekend video, I pulled up the lyrics because I was like, I have no idea what he's saying right now. So I should read it. Um, and then you can see in the Igor reaction, I felt like I couldn't really get a word out. I couldn't say anything that I was thinking because that one had the limitation of, I wasn't supposed to pause. Like Tyler, the creator said specifically, do not pause this while you're listening to it. Oh, so I was like, okay, I can't even remember anything that I was thinking of. Um, so I don't know how to express my thoughts while also giving this reaction. Um, and then the one that I did after that was Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. And that one, I cried really hard. And I was <laughs> in internally, I was like, I can't put this on the internet without kind of explaining myself or like giving a little bit of context. Otherwise, people are going to think um, maybe I'm too sensitive or I could pre like see the see the comments coming in of, um, way too sensitive, way too emotional, but there, there's reason behind it. And I wanted to express that. Um, so I, I don't know. I think also at the same time, I kind of got into dissect podcasts. Um, and it's not necessarily the same thing, but just kind of talking about it with the music in mind, um, definitely was inspirational. Um, so I think that that's just the natural progression that I had over the course of several videos. That and makes sense. The community favorites, yeah, the community favorites came because um, I just really enjoy reading comments and I like having a little extra perspective or uh, context. So definitely wanted to figure out a way to put those in there. But you did mention <laughs> that it kind of solves the copyright problem. It doesn't really. Because, it doesn't. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't really at all. Uh, that's still kind of a mystery to me, and I'm still trying to navigate it. But yeah, now for those I of you who, me. for those of you out there who are watching who do not make YouTube videos with music in it, the YouTube copyright system is awful. It is absolutely awful because the software it's... that YouTube has, they scan your video, it immediately picks it up, no matter what. It doesn't matter <laughs> if you've got two seconds of music, it'll pick it up. I think I think the window for YouTube is if it's less than five seconds, they won't flag it, they won't claim it, but anything beyond that. So for anybody making music reaction videos, obviously our stuff gets claimed. Gets claimed by the record label, the copyright owner. No surprises, no big deal there, right? But of course, fair use in the US is a law. I don't I don't know how I land in that because I use a lot of music. You're supposed to minimize the amount and stuff like that. But if you want to appeal it, you write it this whole appeal and it goes to the record label and they decide whether or not they want to let you keep ad revenue that they would other th otherwise get, which obviously that's not a conflict of interest at all. <laughs> so then they say yeah. no and then you go, okay, so then you can appeal that rejection if you want to, but if it, if that gets denied, then you get a copyright strike and if you get three strikes, your channel's banned forever. And it goes back to the same person who already said no. It's a complete joke. It's it's ridiculous. And so yeah, yeah. like 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 you already know. And I'm, I mean, I'm more so trying to just let people kind of get an insight to to what we mm -hmm. deal with. Is any video that we make that has music, it's claimed, no ad revenue, nothing, nothing at all, no money from that at all. Yeah. And it's also difficult because you're dealing with a bunch of different labels. And then also there are people that will falsely claim. Um, so my first Mr. Morale videos, I did the entire thing just with my uh, voiceover on top of it. And it wasn't claimed for a while, but someone falsely claimed it. They actually were like a, an Anthony Fantano up, a stream uploader. Like it wasn't, they weren't affiliated with Anthony Fantano, but they claimed that I was posting content from one of his streams 
which obviously wasn't the case, but I couldn't appeal it because it would just go to them and they have no uh, actual say in anything. So I don't know. Wow. That ended up getting blocked anyway. So <laughs> I was like, whatever. But that's another, uh, I don't know if you've had this issue. I've had this before too. And, and then I actually had recently had the reverse. I've had videos go up. They go through checks. They get claimed for copyright. No, uh, very normal, standard process. They're fine. They're visible. They're public. I post them. A week later, they're blocked. No email, yeah. no notification, no explanation as for why. Nothing. Just blocked. And then here's what's really weird. I did Kenny Beats. He has a, an album out recently called Louie. That, that went through that process, right? It was up for like two weeks and then it was blocked. And I didn't even know it was blocked. Somebody sent me a message and I was like, oh, that's weird. Oh yeah, it's blocked. Okay, YouTube's being lame again. And then I looked again like two weeks later and it was back to being public. And I didn't do anything, nothing. I don't know what the hell's going on. It, behind the scenes in the inner workings of YouTube, it's very frustrating as somebody just trying to upload videos though. It's very, very frustrating. Absolutely, yeah. It's just kind of... Uh kind of a toss of what could happen whenever you upload a video. It's like, I could put in so much work in this and it can get blocked within the next week. We'll see. <laughs> but Yeah. Yeah. Which is why, I mean, I feel like this is a natural thank you to any patron out there who is subscribed to my channel, to Pat's channel, because it makes all the difference in the world knowing at minimum, the effort that goes into it can at least be viewed and enjoyed by somebody who cares enough to kick in a couple bucks, support the channel. You just launched your Patreon. How's, how's your Patreon coming along? How do you feel about that? Yeah, it's been interesting because I was really hesitant about it for a while, you know that, but mostly because of the copyright stuff. I was like, well, if it's not like allowed on YouTube, why would it be allowed on Patreon? That was kind of my thinking at first, um, but I started looking into other people's patreon not even just in our niche but like i subscribe to johnny harris's patreon for example and he does like documentary style stuff so completely out of our niche and he just offers a bunch of stuff for the community and i was like oh that's so cute i want i want to do that i want to i want to foster a little community so i'm it's still i have like a little schedule that i want to keep on top of and posting uh reactions that probably won't go on the main channel but still are cut. I know that a lot of people subscribe to the Patreons because they want uncut stuff, but I just, I'm still really paranoid about it. So I don't wanna, I just don't wanna, I don't feel comfortable doing that. But, uh, but other than that, you know, the, the Discord and uh, other, uh, I have like a private Twitter that people can follow. It's, it's just a lot of fun to connect on a, on a calmer level that isn't blasting out to 70,000 people or whatever, you know? Yeah, so. well, and it is great because you do, I, I mean, I've had, I think my Discord server has been up for a year and it's gotten bigger. And so sometimes it gets a little chaotic, but if there's been a, there's a lot of people there that have been there the whole time. And I, I, you know, I know who they are. We chat regularly. It is so cool to have that kind of, I, I want to say intimate. I don't know if that's really the right word. Maybe it's the right word in the broad context of the internet. You know, it is a yeah. more inter intimate experience because yeah, I do know who they are. I do know that Zach's wife is a huge Rush fan and she's teaching him Rush. And so every now and then when he cracks off a Rush lyric, I'm like, hey, your wife's teaching you good, man. Like, you know, just stuff like that. You know, it's really cool. It's really cool. And I, I hope anybody out there, you know, especially people who subscribe to your Patreon or anybody's Patreon, honestly, especially, especially you, like, especially you right now since you, it just started. Like people who might be hesitant to join and support you, I, I suggest do it. Get in early because then you kind of become part of that core beginning group. And if you stick around, you just you just be, become part of the whole thing. And it's it's really cool. And it, it does matter to us as as the people on the yeah. other side. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've already seen in, in your Discord you're you chat pretty regular in there too and you've got some people that you're talking with and back and forth i don't pop in too often um but yeah it's just it's neat it makes the experience so so incredible because especially i don't know how you feel but for me like i get so cynical 
and jaded about internet comments, right? Not not necessarily in in my area, but just in general. Like I see all this crap on Reddit and on Twitter, and it's yeah. just like God, man. And so it's it's nice to go. No, these are actually real people out here. They're real people. Yeah, I love that part of it too, especially in in the Discord because it's like kind of a free for all. Everyone can talk and not talk as they want. So it's interesting to just be an observer sometimes of other people's conversations yeah but getting to know people in that way and not having the expectation of you know being one-on-one -on -one, which is also something that i'm really grateful for is like having the community part of it but yeah it's it's definitely been great the discord has been around for quite a while i've had my discord server probably since 2017 and just like revamped it oh my god can i talk about when i when i when my channel blew up and people started infiltrating my discord server oh please it was so crazy yeah please do so, no tell us all about it so um i had a very very small discord community it was like 200 people or something like that after i posted my mr round the big steppers uh reaction in may the uh the amount of people in it skyrocketed to maybe a thousand people and it was so much to manage. I didn't have any, I mean, I had moderators, but they were all my friends and they weren't always active. So sure. it was like uh, very difficult to manage. There were some people in there in bad faith, like just posting nasty things and then leaving or like before we could even block them. And it caused me so much stress. I had to take a break from YouTube and Discord. And like I was talking about it in therapy. I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. Um, but ever since then, like I, I implemented a bunch of filtering systems like you have to chat to a certain level in order to even swear in the server <laughs> like you can't post a picture unless you introduce yourself like things like that um, just to make sure that the community is a little nicer or pleasant to be around and not so chaotic and um, I prefer that like <laughs> obviously the just the really supportive community and people who are interested in things and having conversation um, it's gotten a lot better since then and definitely something that I want to foster rather than aim for like the most amount of people. So I've even like hidden my discord links from my main channel or from the path reacts channel. Um, so you can't join unless you are a fan or like find me other places like Twitter or uh, whatever. So oh, man, that was crazy. The May and June, I think I took a break from everything because it was just way too much. I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. It, it can be a lot sometimes. <clears throat> I recently opened up, because I do my, my BUAG, right? My Bob's Underground Artist mm -hmm. Gauntlet. And I posted a thing on Twitter a while ago saying, okay, if you're a new artist, send me songs. You know, it's, my inbox is open. They sent songs. <laughs> yeah. like, I was showing my wife there just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling through Twitter. Oh, my God. It can be really overwhelming sometimes. And I, I think, but I think what you did, that's what you got to do. You just go, you know what? I got to, I'm going to push back. I'm going to, I'm going to take a break and just breathe, you know, cause you have to, otherwise, I mean, the alternative is you try and manage it and yeah, you stress out, you burn out, you get sick of it. You want to quit cause you just don't want to handle it. You don't want to deal with this crap anymore. That's funny. That's why I didn't know. I, I remember somebody talking about, it. maybe it was you talking about, it, but yeah, how it just like blew up all of a sudden. I yeah, don't even if you look at my analytics, it's like a straight line in from me because the three albums that I did in a row were like Igor, Mr. Round the Big Steppers, and then whatever was after that, and uh, Kid Sea Ghost, I think. And it was just like, boom, I was like, okay, I need to tone this down because I cannot manage this. <laughs> um, and then I ended up doing the the Drake, uh, honestly, never mind, oh. because I was like, this will this will probably calm things down a little bit because <laughs> this is something that I know I will not enjoy. Um, but you know. I, you know, you talk about that too, because, you know, you know, turning the tables and Kevin and Connor and, and, and those yeah. two and their channel, because though they just blew up, they blew up. We started our channels about the same time. And I think they're over half a million subscribers now. And I'm still at 80. Yeah. And I, every now and then I find myself going, man, you know, a little bit of jealousy, right? A little bit of envy of, oh, it'd be so cool to have that, right? Especially with Patreon, because that's a decent amount of money coming in of course but then I always every time I step back and go honestly I like the slow steady yeah. 
manageable growth. You know, Absolutely. you know who the people are. They're slowly trickling in. You get to know them. Nothing, nothing feels like it's out of your hands anymore. You, you can have it control. Yeah. I definitely prefer that as well over the explosive growth that uh, I don't, I don't think that I'm equipped for that, <laughs> but well then too, I think, I mean, people realize it's just you, but I don't think they realize like how many messages people get, you know? And so I, I don't know. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. It, it's hard to have that perspective because when I message other people, like like I'm trying to get an interview with JPEG Mafia, I would love to sit down and talk mm -hmm. with him. I think we. I, I would love to do this with him. I think that'd be amazing. I would love to watch that. Oh, it'd be incredible. It'd be, I think it'd be a lot yeah. of fun. But, you know, I, I've reached out to him a couple of times. Not a lot because I don't want to bug the guy. But I can only, I, I mean, if my inbox looks like what it does, I can only imagine what his looks like, you know? And, and so it is cool because people, I'm sure when you reply back to people, they're like, oh, my God, you replied, you know, like, yeah, that's cool that they respect it. But at the same time, too, like, it's, it's just it is can be hard to manage. It's just a lot coming in between Patreon and Discord and Twitter and, and emails and all that. Sometimes it can be a lot. Yeah. Yeah. There was a point at the beginning where I felt like I had to respond to every single comment that I got because otherwise I would feel bad. I was like, they take the time to, to write all of this out and they appreciate what I'm doing. I need to respond. But after some time, it just got way like, un I don't want to say unmanageable, but like impossible to keep yeah. up with. So I had like, I don't know, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I still try to read all of them, but I can't respond to all of them yeah. because that would just w take way too much mental energy that I probably should use elsewhere. <laughs> but it, it's hard because I, I do want to let everyone know, like I'm I'm reading everything and I I love what you're saying or or I hate what you're saying. But you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what's neat is Kevin. For, he said the same thing. Like when he when they first got started, he was like, "No, <laughs> man." I, if people are taking the time, I want to respond and blah, blah, blah. And he, it was the same thing. Like you just, you can't, you just can't, unfortunately. It's impossible. Yeah. But I, I'm, maybe it's bad, but I'm trying to do that on Patreon now. Like if, if someone leaves a comment, I'm trying to respond because I feel like that's not going to, to uh, be as, grow as much as the YouTube comments do. So. Yeah. That's a lot easier to manage. And at least. Yeah. What's cool about the Patreon too is when you do that, you'll notice it's the same people leaving comments. And again, kind of like Discord, you start to build a little bit of a, a relationship with them because you see the same names. They're excited about this. They're excited about that. And yeah, yeah that's cool. Unfortunately, I feel like that doesn't happen on YouTube. Like there are people that have said, oh, I left this comment on this other video too. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even connect them as being the same person. So, uh, you know, just different platforms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, with all that said, what do you think about your future in terms of with the channel going forward? Do you have any medium term plans, long term plans? I mean, where do you think you're going to go with all this? Um, it's a good question because I feel like it will change over time as it already has in the last year that I've been doing this. But I do have like the first quarter of this year planned out that I'm excited to do. I have Basically, I've changed the way that I'm listening or choosing albums um, because initially it was just whatever was the most commented or the most whatever. Um, but sometimes I'm just not in the mood to listen to that. So I'm kind of going by how I'm feeling. Um, I have a list of things and kind of the uh, basic descriptions that people have left or whatever. So like right now, I'm kind of in a more edgy, <laughs> like uh, gnarly, gnashy kind of vibe. Um, so I have a couple of tracks listed to fit that. And then probably whenever I sit down today or tomorrow, like uh, whatever one piques my interest a little bit, then I will, I'll listen to that. Um, but I, I also do want to expand a little. I'm a little nervous to branch out into other genres right now because of your recommendation um, <laughs> for Pink Floyd, uh -huh. because that attracted a completely different audience yep. that I was not expecting. And they have been very mean to me, so I'm a little traumatized. Um, I don't, I don't really know like other, um, other fan bases or other groups aside from who I've already 
um, listen to. Yeah. So that kind of also comes into play. Just a lot of different, <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, with Pink Floyd, I think generally speaking, that fan base, you're dealing with boomers. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're a different crowd. Yeah, they're definitely a different crowd. I, I, it bums me out to hear that because I was hoping that at least the Pink Floyd fans, Pink Floyd fans, would just be excited to see somebody, you know, the kids, right? The kids are listening to the good music, good for them, blah, 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 kind of a thing. And I mean, I, for me, Dark Side of the Moon is just an amazing album anyway. So for you to listen to it is in my book. Yeah, for sure. There have definitely been more of that than the negative comments, but the negative ones have been so mean, like telling me to never post again. Why would you ever do this? Like what? your voice is annoying. Why are you talking over this guitar solo? I'm like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I do remember saying that. Like, I was like, oh, I'm worried people might get mad that you're talking over this or you're talking over that because it is funny how there are people who watch, it's weird, like they, they watch a reaction video because they want to watch someone react, but then they also want to listen to 100% of the music. And it's like, go put the fucking record on then. Like if you want to listen to the music, why are you here? Yeah, I've just started ignoring those comments and the really, really mean ones, I just block them from my account because clearly they don't want to watch it. So <laughs> yeah, they don't have to now. Yeah. But well, I did send you another recommendation for a different genre, which I'm sure you saw. And that fan base, I don't, I feel like they would not be as mean. Um, they are, they are an incredible fan base. They are a little, uh, I don't want to say rabid because that means like angry, but they're just hardcore and they love yeah. that band. But they also love when new people check out that band because it's kind of like a, the, I don't want to say it's the peak of reaction experience because that kind of implies something else, but like, they want to see a new fan born, basically. That's what it is. They're, they're just excited to get somebody else into the fold and experience this incredible music that's in changed their lives forever, right? So that, should you decide to do that one, hopefully the experience is a little bit better. I think it would be a little bit better because it is a younger, a little bit of a younger audience as well. It's not just all boomers listen to that. Yeah, that's good to know. Definitely, I don't know. Do you do any pre-work before you go into listening to an album or starting a new artist? Uh, usually not. I usually go in 100% blind, but I've started to change that because it is nice to have some context. And so yeah. lately, I'd say in like the last six weeks, two months ish, I've, what I've done is I've gone to the Wikipedia page for the album and I'll just read mm. a little bit about the album because that's really general surface level stuff, you know? It started when I was doing um, the Thriller reaction, Michael Jackson's Thriller. I wanted to like look up total record sales, you know, and Thriller is the number one album and all this other stuff. And it was like, oh, okay, yeah, there's actually some, there's some stuff that I can learn about an album that's not a spoiler to what I'm about to hear. Yeah. So that, that's Yeah, it's kind of hard to, to tiptoe on that line. Um, recently, I started watching interviews that they've done for promo before they release the album. So it would kind of put me in the same mindset as someone who was going to listen to this for the first time anyway, um, because they're not probably going to give out any spoilers beforehand. But some artists don't do interviews or, or like press release stuff. Yeah. Beforehand, so it's kind of inconsistent um, in that regard. Still trying to navigate how, how I want to get into an album or a new artist. But yeah, just generally also having a, an idea of how the fan base is would also probably be helpful <laughs> but yeah that's a harder that's one hard to, to figure yeah. out you know like yeah i remember when i was going to do uh Nicki minaj people were telling me the barbs be careful the barbs will be watching <laughs> oh they were they were warning you about yeah. it. yeah and i had a great experience with the album i had a great experience with you know that section of the community and stuff so no problem there honestly when it comes to the fan base i've I, it's not something i really think about but I also have not had that kind of response like you've had, like people say never post again and how dare you talk. I do get every now and then I do get comments of people saying, why does this guy keep pausing it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But those have been, 
those have been around since even the first couple <laughs> of videos. So those I've kind of swept under the rug. Yeah. Um, because because of the same reason you mentioned before, if you want to listen to the music, then just go put on the album. Yeah. But I'm going to give my reaction and I'm going to, this is uh, how it happened when I was first listening to it. So this is what you're going to get. But Yeah. It is funny. Some of the comments that people leave, it's like, why, why are you pausing? I don't know. Why are you watching? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what are we doing here? We, we understand. Yeah. Um, they're a little, they're a little lost. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. And honestly, I mean, for the most part, so many of the comments I've gotten, have it's just been incredibly positive. And so the one offs, yeah. I just go, whatever. The ones that do crack me up too are the ones, especially like when I started early, cause I've never listened to any hip hop you know, deliberate journey through hip hop. And people say, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah. That's why I'm here. <laughs> To learn, because I don't know. I don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you're at least potentially open to other genres, which is cool. That's cool. I have stayed away from that because it just opens up a whole new can of worms in terms of requests, you know? Like, That's I've, true. I've already got like 100 albums on my list. If I open up another genre, here comes another 100 albums. It's like, well, I'll, I'll never... I mean, I guess that's a good problem to have, right? It's more content, but at the same time, it feels that very difficult to manage in terms of managing things. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think for the near future, I'm just going to stay in my lane, like with the, with the albums that I've kind of heard from comments based off of albums that I've recently been listening to, because that is its own little pool, right? Um, probably not stretching out too far, um, but yeah so are there any I, I do feel i'm sorry sorry are there any are there any artists who you have not heard yet that you're like more excited to get into than others like who in your mind not necessarily requests but just your own personal interest because usually those two pools are a little different you know oh good question well nothing on my personal end right now aside from like new albums from artists that I have been listening to for forever. So like Skrillex is coming out with a new album that I'm really excited for. Um, but for requests, I am really excited to get into the big names that I have seen pop up over and over and over again. I'm just really intimidated right now to get into them. <laughs> I have to kind of distance myself a little bit before I get into people like Frank Ocean or Mac Miller because they've been hyped up way too much. I'm scared that the expectation will be... Um, you know, mis mismatched a little bit. Yeah, I went. I just went through that with Drake. And if you're reading this, it's too late. And with Drake, he's so well. I mean, you know this. You've heard the same things I had. He's the biggest artist, and blah blah like blah, blah blah blah. And the Drake fans, they love Drake. And I that's what happened with me a week ago. I did I did the reaction to his album, and I was expecting something totally different and and this was my own fault too i came in with a really strong expectation and i don't know if you watched that reaction but it, the whole thing was basically me just shit talking drake the whole time right you didn't and, watch the reaction because i haven't listened to that album but someone did timestamp me um that you you shouted me out and then it made me feel like oh is this my fault did i accidentally give you the expectation that you're supposed to hate drake no um, i was in, in that part, I was I was laughing and celebrating about how on your reaction you were just straight up skipping songs. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, because that shit that was amazing. That was amazing, especially on a reaction channel. Because I think generally speaking, when with reaction channels, most people kind of expect a positive reception, right? And they would never in a million years expect someone to just straight up go nope and just skip. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, if I'm if I'm completely transparent, I was still writing on I had like a, a hypomanic episode after my initial blow up. So my brain was like all over the place firing neurons everywhere. Oh wow. And um yeah, I don't think that I would have posted that if I were in the headspace that I am in now because it was so negative. I was like I was rewatching it after I watched your timestamp and I was like, Oh my god, I don't even <laughs> I don't even remember saying this. <laughs> Oh my God. Uh, yeah. But that, I do, I do feel a little lucky that that was kind of, um, an off album. Like even the Drake fans were, were kind of thrown off a bit that it was a dance album and not necessarily something that they were expecting. So I think that that played in my favor. Whereas for you, it seemed like it didn't, it didn't really. Yeah. Not really. Not really. But 
you know, what was cool about that reaction was, you know, the community, they called me out on it. And I feel properly so because I didn't come in with an open mind. And that's always been my thing. Come in with an open mind because I don't know what your experience has been. But for, for me, no one has ever said, you must like this. You must, you know, maybe they're bummed out if I don't get into it. Maybe they say some things like this is why I connect to it so much more or whatever. And like, John, help me understand a little bit. I get that. But no one's ever said you must like this thing ever. And so when I came in with this certain expectation and then I never shifted away from that, I just stayed in my spot of what I expected it to be. And when it wasn't that, I just started shitting all over the album, basically. Yeah, that, that's that, a... that was wrong. You know, that's on me for sure. And so, yeah, that, that was that whole deal. But... but part of it is the expectation. And that's what I'm trying to, to tone down a little bit for some of these other artists that I've been heard like, uh, hyped up so much on the in the comment section at least like I I'm kind of nervous to to have the wrong reaction So I just kind of have to step back until I feel like I'm in the right headspace to do that Yeah, and I'm glad you came back to that because I did want to touch on that. You're absolutely right. I think This is something I think the like the viewers of these channels don't really understand especially with with requests and stuff like that is and it sucks that it happened with Drake because Drake is so polarizing to begin with but in my opinion, it's not the the haters of the artists that make it more hard or more difficult to listen to an album. It's the massive fans because they hype things up. Like I, I can only imagine on your hype meter right now where Frank Ocean's Blonde sits because you've probably never heard an, a bad word uttered about the album, right? It's perfect. It's a masterpiece. It's the best thing you'll ever hear. And when you hear that, as, as someone who has not heard the album, and then you go, like for me, naturally, I just go, okay, so it's better than whatever, you know, Good Kid, Mad City, Mr. Moran, The Big Step. Like you're going to immediately start thinking about these amazing projects that you've heard to Pimp a Butterfly. And you're going to go, well, it's got to be better than those, right? Because it's it gets so hyped up. The fans really push these things up. Yeah, definitely. Oh. I, I don't I don't I don't want to say that it's something that keeps me up at night, but definitely something that I think about a lot. <laughs> oh man, that shit's too funny. I well, I would say to you and to myself, what you're doing is the best way to do it. Just wipe the brain, no expectations, no anything. Like it's it is in some ways it is better to come in completely blind, so you have no idea what it's going to be. You just let it be what it is. You enjoy it or you don't. And then, you know, that's it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> blonde. <clears throat> All that said, though, Blonde is amazing. <laughs> just, okay. just, just so you know, it, it is. Every amazing. time someone says that, I have to set back the reaction date like three weeks. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry, everybody. I just pushed that back into like May now, right? Uh, that's funny. That's funny. That's cool, though. I mean, it, you know, it honestly, it's kind of refreshing to talk to somebody who's going through the same shit I'm going through sometimes. <laughs> like, this isn't something you, you know, you don't, you don't meet a lot of people that have these same problems. So this is, it's kind of nice. Like my own little therapy session here with you. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. I would also recommend starting a journal because I started it one after I listened to Good Kid no, after I listened to To Pimp a Butterfly, I started a journal and just writing down everything that's happening with YouTube and with the communities and, and things like that. It's helped a lot. So Yeah, that. that is a good idea. That's a really good idea. Yeah. Well, I think another... Actually, it was inspired by Kendrick because oh, he really? started a journal after he did Good Kid Mad City. And I, after I read that in one of his interviews, I was like, okay, I'm starting my own journal. <laughs> yeah, it is neat. My sister-in-law recently tore her ACL. And, and she needs her knee to do her jump. And so she's been going through some life-changing uh, events, obviously. She's gone through physical therapy, and it's just been hard, right? It's been really hard. And I told her, look, one day at a time. And then I actually just kind of thought of that. Yeah, write a journal. Because she was talking about, like, the physical therapy, the pain that she's going through. But then how a week later it wasn't that hard. And, and so uh, it's working. So I said, dude, just write that down. Write down 
I mean, every day, but if you can write down, hey, this is what it felt like, this is how hard it was, and then you go back and read that two weeks later, three weeks later, a month later, you're going to see your progress, and that's going to help you on that long term. Yeah. I, I just thought of that. So sorry. It has nothing to do with what we're talking about. but Well, it does, it does help to see the progress, and it also helps to, to have more motivation, I think. So there are some days where I'm a little more energized than others, and uh, I'll go back to those entries and be like, oh yeah, uh, this thing inspired me. Maybe I should rewatch it or maybe I should re-listen to it. Um, and maybe it will inspire me to do something now. You know, uh, there are just a lot of, a lot of cool things that come from reflecting on your experiences as you're like, I don't know, talking to your past self or like, <laughs> it's such a weird way to communicate with yourself, but it's, it's so cool. Yeah, no, I, that's a great idea. That really is a great idea. I, you know, and that kind of reminds me of when we had talked before, you had said you didn't really want to get locked into a schedule and you wanted to kind of have, you know, free movement, basically. I mean, how do you feel about that now in terms of, you know, you've got a Patreon, the channel's bigger, a little bit more expectation, perhaps. I mean, do you, do you feel like you're going to try and keep a free schedule? Or you're going to try and be consistent? Where, where are you landing on that? Yeah, I think that... I don't have a schedule in the YouTuber sense. So like some people will say I'll upload on Fridays. I think you do that. You have yeah. a daily, a day set schedule. Um, I don't really do that even still, but I do have like, I want to get two main reactions up every month and then three like Patreon things out every month. Um, so that will <laughs> hopefully keep me busy. I have like a, a personal schedule that I would like to keep too, but I'm not going to tell anyone because I told everyone December 4th for To Pimp a Butterfly. <laughs> and then I sat down December 2nd, 3rd, and 4th just like grinding out that video because I was like, oh, now I've told all these people. Now I have to actually <laughs> stick to that schedule. So I'm not doing that anymore because I literally stayed up for all three days just editing. Um, that was that was insane and I probably shouldn't have done it, but it was the deadline was just drilled into my mind at that point. I had to commit. So <laughs> I'm not going to I'm not going to give out dates anymore, but a general general layout two videos on the main uh on the path reacts channel three videos on patreon and then some sporadic things whenever i feel like them <laughs> so very cool yeah no it's interesting too when you say oh this will come out this day people hold you to it it's yeah it's, i was so terrified <laughs> it's two minutes like, past I, noon where's the video you said it was gonna be at noon where's the video <laughs> Because I, I set that date in October and I was like, oh, I'll definitely have the video ready by December. Um, and then I didn't. <laughs> oh, my God. But people remembered and they were DMing me on Twitter. They were like sending me messages on Instagram. They're like, hey, so when's the, when's the To Pimp a Butterfly video coming out? I was like, um, well, I've reacted to it. I just haven't edited it. So we don't know yet. Wow. December 4th. <laughs> <clears throat> in general... How long does it take you to edit your f and, and fit? You've not recording. You've recorded and not even researching because that's its own thing. You do your like research and stuff too, right? Like to be butterfly, you're listening to dissect podcasts and all that shit. Like you put a shit ton of time into that album, that video, but just editing. How long do you yeah. spend editing? Um, it's probably unhealthy, but I just do Saturday and Sunday like no breaks just sit down and edit so <laughs> i need to figure out a way to to make it a little easier on myself and make it a, a little more sustainable as well because especially for to pimp a butterfly because that was the more recent one that i did that was uh in that binge mode it's it's not healthy that's and a lot was... <laughs> of work that's a lot of work path so i, yeah. I so like like 15 hours average to edit yeah but it's mostly like the perfectionist in me because I like time the audio to so that there aren't really jarring cuts. I try to make it match to whatever other measure makes sense in my head. Um, and then I try to make sure that there's enough time um, for me to put in my voiceover and things like that. So I'm slowly coming to a process, which I do describe on my Patreon, but it's still kind of chaotic. Wow. Um, <laughs> wow. So. Anybody, anybody watching this who loves path loves channel wants to support path keep that in mind if you're hesitant on kicking in a couple of books for patreon 15 hours of editing per video sorry but some 
some albums are easier than others. Like sure. The, the recent Jodie one, probably, I don't know, half that time. Like the the Tempo Butterfly one was probably its own yeah uh, its own beast. But but um, still seven hours. Also five hours. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of time. That's a lot of time. Yeah, but I'm always happy with what comes out. So it's not like, well, aside from the first Don FM video, I wish I could redo that, but I don't have the, the original footage anymore. Um, but yeah, everything on my channel, I'm, I'm pretty proud of. So that's that's what matters to me, I think. The end product is great. It really is great. And I, I watch mm -hmm. your videos sometimes and I go, this is amazing and I will never, ever put in the time to do this ever. <laughs> and now you definitely won't now that you know how much time it, oh. it does take. <laughs> oh my God, man. That's that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. Well, honestly, I like I I'm glad that you enjoy the end result. It sounds like you even enjoy the process overall. So that 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 helps. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. And now, like, instead of maybe going, well, Path's blowing up. You know, the little kid in me who might get jealous from time to time. Well, now, no, Path needs like half a million followers and 10,000 patrons like like no let's get yeah everybody go go support path go 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 <laughs> oh my goodness no uh generally I, I really do enjoy the process ever since I was young I've always loved editing videos just never really had anything to edit mm. because I don't I actually don't like being in front of the camera I don't know if you could tell I'm kind of shy but <laughs> I got the impression I hate recording myself <laughs> I, hate, I hate filming myself I hate listening to myself speak but having something to edit has always been um, interesting. That's kind of why I got into music because it's a similar process. It's not exactly the same, but just being able to edit something without me being the the main spectacle. Yeah. Is super interesting to, to dive into. So. Yeah. You talk about music. I know about your album, Pat. I know about it. I've listened to it. Mm -hmm. you got, my, my EP. You got any music projects in the work? Anything like that? Any... No. no, I feel like now I'm even more terrified to make music because now people will probably listen to it. Right. Uh, whereas before it was like I was just throwing it on, on SoundCloud and no one cared. Um, so no. it was just experimenting and having fun, kind of learning more about the um, the production process, which I think has helped a lot in like me giving reactions because then I can say, oh, I don't like the way that this is mixed or, you know, something stupid like that. But, but people appreciate the <laughs> just the general knowledge, I think. Yeah, um, it adds to it for sure. Because if you if you tinker yeah. around with it, well, not even tinker around with it. If you've done it, you do it. Then yeah, you have that level of knowledge and understanding, which is really cool. I mean, what about just in terms of in your own your own time making music, not to release, not for anybody, but just for yourself for your own enjoyment? Do you still do that at all? Oh yeah, yeah. Sometimes I'll I'll open up Ableton and just mess around a little bit, but. Yeah, probably won't be releasing my own music anytime soon just because now there are a lot more ears. <laughs> it changes it, huh? It does. It really does. I kind of also just want something for myself right now because I feel like everything that I do, I kind of post online, which is com a little unrelated to the, well, actually, no, not at all unrelated because the reason why, or the reason why this channel kind of started was because I was putting out content of something that I was doing, right? I just want something for myself uh, that doesn't go online, that just, you know, kind of keeps me f creatively fulfilled without any expectations or anything like that. So yeah. I think that that will be music for me for quite a while until, I don't know, maybe I find some or make something that other people will enjoy or that I would like to share. Who knows? Yeah. But I'm just going with the flow right now. Well, I'll put out one request for your own music that you're making in your own spare time. <clears throat> If at ever you make a fat ba a fat bass line where you're there, doo -doo -doo -doo, just just ten seconds. I just want to see ten seconds. If you ever end up in that space, you've got yourself a bass guitar and you're plucking them strings, and you got yourself a fat bass line. Just throw up ten seconds. I want to see that. I would love to see Path laying down a beat on a bass guitar. That would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure I'd be fine with sharing with friends and uh, less people but definitely not not in public <laughs> that that part you know talking with some of the newer artists who are making stuff and they're trying to find an audience they're just trying to you know do it. that part's really hard because <clears throat> it's hard enough to make music it's hard enough to be inspired by something to want to write a song about it it's hard enough to yeah. do it well and then and then you throw in this whole other thing of well what are people going to think 
are people going to listen to it? How are they going to respond to it? And when, when I think about that whole just concept, it immediately loops me right back to what I, you see artists say all the time. You got to make what you like and just fuck everybody else and what they think. You have to make music for yourself. It has to be for yeah. yourself. And then if people like it, great. And if they don't, it doesn't matter. It was always for yourself to begin with. Absolutely. That's kind of how I feel about these videos too. It's like, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to just make stuff that other people will uh, be entertained by. It kind of has to stick or stay true to how I'm feeling with the, with the music that I'm listening to and my reactions and things like that. The, the worst thing is like feigning a reaction and people can see right through that. Like, Absolutely. So yeah, just back to what we were talking about, about before, just you don't know if these new reactors are, are actually being genuine or if they just want the attention. It's, you can see it. So it's, you yeah, can, you yeah, well you just, can just do what you want. Yeah. There's one reaction. I, I cannot remember the name of the channel. It's a guy and a girl. I think they're from Ethiopia or Somalia or something like that. They have pretty thick accents and they're reacting to Johnny Cash hurt. Do you know that song? Oh, path. Oh, path. So Nine Inch Nails. Are, are you, you know of Nine Inch Nails? Just from you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Trent Reznor is Nine Inch Nails. He's, he hires oh. the band members and all this other stuff. He does a lot of the music. Anyway, wrote a song called Hurt. Great song. Very dark. Uh, comes from a dark place. Uh, I won't say anything about it. Hopefully, maybe maybe you'll just do a one-off listen to it and, and check it out. Like, I would recommend reacting to the Johnny Cash video for Hurt, but before you do, listen to the Nine Inch Nails song. Like, listen to the song, get familiar with the song, because well, the way Trent Reznor does it, it's very dark. And he has interviews where he's talking about he was in a very very dark place when he wrote it. You know, all this other stuff. Johnny Cash did a cover. And it completely changes the song. And then he did a video. I'm, I, I'm almost like on the verge of crying just thinking about it. It is, in my opinion, the most powerful music video I've ever seen in my life. And these two, this guy and this girl did a reaction to it. And there's this part where the girl just, you can like see her break. Like it just, tears start rolling down her. And it's incredible. It's an incredible reaction because it's just true. And I don't want to say anything else. <laughs> I don't want to give it away, but man that that reaction has been my favorite forever <laughs> i don't even remember when oh. i found it but every now and then i go back and watch that one because it's just incredible especially since it's that song and the way that girl breaks and the way when too because you can see it's it's so profound to me because you see the emotional reaction from her but you see why there's an image that flashes on the screen and it and so you know something happened, either she's missing this person or, or what, it's, there's just a connection and it just, it just yeah. punches right into her. It's incredible, oh. incredible. Anyway, I, you can't say much to that because you haven't seen anything of what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, but it, it does have to be genuine and you can see it. Like you can make the connection oh, as man. just someone watching the reaction. Yeah. And otherwise it doesn't work. Otherwise, what's the point of the reaction? You know? Yeah. Definitely has to be genuine. Yeah, I don't like the people bobbing along. There was there was one song. What was it? Oh, well, anyway, who cares? I don't want to talk about that because people don't want to hear me try and remember some reaction video I watched, right? They want to listen to you. <laughs> but I, I would, I think, I think you would find that amazing, honestly. And so I, I recommend that. You can add that to your list of a thousand items to react to, right? But the Nine Inch Nails, Hurt, listen to that song, get familiar with it, and then do a reaction to the music video by Johnny Cash. And maybe read a little bit about Johnny Cash beforehand, kind of understand his life a little bit. Because the whole that's video... Good. Yeah, that's good to know. The whole video is basically um, just a reflection on his life, basically. Yeah, it's incredible. And you know, <laughs> I go old man mode, right, and just start rambling about all this shit that has nothing to do with that. <laughs> Whatever. But... It, to me, it brings me right back to the core of all of this, which is just loving music, loving the shit out of music and watching other people love music. And it's so incredible. And it's so neat that music can bring so many different people together. 
you know, you're in Paris, mm -hmm. I'm in California, we're talking to each other because of music and because of reaction channels. And it's all just kind of mind blowing, you know, when you really step back and think about it. Yeah, I think every internet community that I've ever been a part of has been music related. Like it's crazy how much it can bring people together. But, oh, even even outside of the internet too, like joining choir at school, you know, you, you make friends that way. Yeah. You know, things like that. Or like when you go to when you go to a Kendrick Lamar show and you look around yeah. at the audience and you see all oh these different people. I was so emotionally moved when I went to the the Steppers tour because as even the songs that I didn't know that were from To Pimp a Butterfly that I had only heard like one time prior. It was like everyone knew all the words, everyone was singing along, everyone was so into it and it just rubs off on you like a secondhand high and it's just so amazing. It's uh, definitely brought me to tears like at the concert and I was like uh yeah getting so emotional <laughs> it was amazing it was amazing mm -hmm. and it was such a great was show. show greatest show alive yeah it was so cool I I felt the same way I really did I felt myself moved just like look I was I got there early and I was just sitting there watching people pour in watching people pour in and I was I was kind of curious like am I going to be the oldest dude in this fucking building right now <laughs> <laughs> there were a couple other people that were older, but I was I was definitely near the top in terms of age, right? But I was just so like like almost relieved to see how different everybody was and they were all there for the same thing, which was nice for me because you go online all the time and there's all this just division and 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 people, you know, lashing out at each other and all this bullshit and I think I honestly think it is a lot of bullshit I think it's put out in front of us to try and make us believe that that we're all against each other and we can't trust anyone I, no go to a fucking music show and you'll see yeah. who's on the same side in terms of you know how we connect as people and what we not necessarily what we stand for I guess that's probably reaching a little too far but <laughs> I don't know there's not as much that divides us as is presented in my opinion yeah it's it's an incredible immersion experience. It's it's crazy. Live yeah, music. <laughs> especially with that album too. I mean, the album was mm -hmm. incredible. Kendrick says and does some things I've never heard before in music. Man, very honest, very open. That guy's incredible. I. Oh. He says he's working on another album. There's another one coming. I'm excited. I'm so stoked. I'll have to add an extra. An extra spot here for the the next one yeah well i mean you've you've started out well because you left a lot of space between the records back there right <laughs> and so you can kind of tighten it up a little bit and you can get more in there yeah you got room you got room for more <laughs> what would you say has been your most enjoyable not necessarily your favorite this is always weird too with with hip-hop because like what's the best album and it's like oh i have to say illmatic or to pip a butterfly right? like these are the requirements but What's, what's an album that you've enjoyed the most or maybe been surprised by the most? Oh, that's a good question because I feel like I haven't listened to a lot of albums in the last year. Like compared to other React channels who do maybe one album a week, I'm very slow in that regard. Um, so I have a smaller pool to choose from. But the one, I mean, the artist that surprised me the most was definitely Kendrick because this last year was the year that I got into him. So obviously I, I dove right in and I connected with everything yeah um it was amazing i don't it's been such a long time since i've connected to an artist like that but i found also tyler the creator last year so diving in i've only listened to flower boy and igor i have listened to call me if you get lost um but I'll, also went to his concert last year oh how was such that an, such an, oh it was crazy because it was during a heat wave so it was <laughs> packed it was gross everyone was like this close to each other uh. it was i thought that it was going to be a pretty bad show but tyler has like insane energy on mm -hmm. stage like even though he he was visibly dripping like sweat and <laughs> <laughs> just suffering a little bit on stage um he still brought the energy he still you know gave a good show and it was it was it was amazing um crowd was great too couldn't really get into any mosh pits because we were so uh, hot and yeah. <laughs> sticky and gross, but uh, good show overall. And I went with one of my friends who, who came to visit, so it was also a special experience yeah. in that regard. But what was I talking about? Tyler. Well, you were talking about you know, Kendrick oh, yeah, the artist and that I Tyler. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then also got into 
Jid this year, so I listened to both Forever Story and The Never Story. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he surprised me, too. Um, I probably... Well, the album that I listened to the most last year was definitely Mr. Morale, The Big Steppers, but because it came out a lot earlier than The Forever Story. Yeah, right. So right. if you give them, like, a ratio, they're probably at the same, like, listening to time <laughs> amount. I don't know if that makes any sense, but surprised by all three of them. It's it's really hard also to be a music reactor because I get really attached to artists and albums, so it's hard for me to move on and listen to something new. Um, I just listen to all of these albums on repeat, basically. So. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, but that was the point of the channel in the first place, was to listen to more music or like to step out of my bubble. And I have to just keep reminding myself, like, I've been rewarded this year by stepping out and finding these new artists, so I need to just keep that mindset moving forward. Maybe I'll find more artists that I can enjoy or albums that I'll enjoy for sure. I think that's been my biggest uh, little treasure is the fact that two years ago I never listened to any hip hop at all. And now I've got, I think I've done almost a hundred albums and I'd say 80 of them have been great. Great. You know, like would listen to them again at any time for the yeah. most part. I mean, there's only been a couple where like, eh, I just wasn't really into it, whatever. But there's some incredible artists in the hip hop world. Holy shit, man. It's incredible. Yeah. Definitely yeah. been blown away. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm excited for this year because I think Tyler's got a new album coming. I'm excited to get back into more Tyler and check that out for sure. There's always the rumor of a Frank Ocean album, although you haven't listened to Frank yet. But um, yeah. And then you've listened to a little bit of JPEG Mafia too, haven't you? I've only listened to Offline LP because um, a couple of my friends wanted to meet up in London for one of his shows. So I had to get familiar with the with the album beforehand. But that's the only one I listened to and I became... A fan after that just haven't listened to his earlier stuff yeah but excited to i think i'll listen to um all my heroes are corn balls great album. Uh, which is a really funny title <laughs> <It's so great. laughs> but... yeah i love peggy i really do he's you know yeah. i i i love to piss people off because i talk about there's a difference between the best and my favorite because there's mm -hmm. there are people who are like no 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 if it's the best that's also your favorite no 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 yeah, that's not true <laughs> i think kendrick's the best man i think i think he's just incredible what he does writing flow i mean just on and on. i could i could praise him all day long but jpeg mafia is my favorite and i love jpeg mafia because that guy there's a there's an artist from the late 80s early 90s goes by the name of apex twin it's all techno electronic and it's just him just one dude and he basically makes these there's some songs with singing but a lot of it's basically instrumental techno stuff you might really like it if you like skrillex he's kind of like the you know pre skrillex era yeah i've heard him mentioned in bubbles like my my music uh edm bubbles but haven't yeah. actually dived in so you're you like edm kind of like louder more chaotic edm or, or I, I don't know much about edm actually i would say probably more so the melodic side of it Ooh. so okay i yeah. might make you a little uh apex twin playlist just so you could okay check it out you know listen to it okay because he's great in the sense that he has some of the just craziest loudest distorted shit i've ever heard in my life and he also has double disc ambient albums to calm wow. quiet soothing so this guy just covers the whole fucking range man it's incredible and i've always loved apex twin because there's so many songs where i listen to these his songs and i'm like this none of this should make sense it kind of feels like a musical representation of the universe of just you know particles flying around and colliding with each other and it's just pure chaos right yet somehow it forms these beats and these sounds and it just works and i've always loved afx twin for that and i've i've always had this feeling of i'm never gonna hear anything like that again i'm never gonna see there's never gonna be an artist that does that and then i found jpeg mafia <laughs> and jpeg mafia to me is like the hip-hop version of afx twin because sometimes i listen to his shit and i'm like this shouldn't make sense like this shouldn't work this should just be noise I shouldn't enjoy this. It's pure chaos, but it works. It's so great, man. And you said Alpine LP. I listen to that. I that is probably you know like you were saying time to to listen ratio. That's probably my number one. I listen to LP yeah. offline all the time, all the time. Love that album. It's so. I was actually listening to this right before our um, our call as I was doing the dishes. <laughs> it's great. I and honestly. I don't even really listen to the front half 
that often. I usually drop in on Rebound and listen to the back half. Over, yeah, Rebound over. is so good. I love Rebound. So and o- good. OG, fucking mm-hmm. love OG. Because you are the hip-hop gangster. <laughs> it just goes, I love it. Fuck, it's so good. It's oh, my God. Well, Path, we're about an hour. And we I used up a bunch of your time before we started recording, too. So thank you so much. <laughs> For coming yeah, on. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. I'm so glad we could sit down and talk and record. I've been I've been like excited about this for a while. Ever since we talked about it back in like November, I was like, oh my God, we can talk with Pat, the conversation, yay. <laughs> I've been excited about it too. And even just any time that we're messaging about random things that are going on in our lives, it's it's always a treat. So, yeah. Although I I did send you that one message. I'm cranky that you essentially live on the other side of the planet because we can so rarely real-time message each other because i'm asleep or you're asleep or i'm at work and yeah, it's, our overlap type our our overlap times are not uh ideal so. right <laughs> they're not existent at all <laughs> but like i always do with with these um at the end i like to say do you have any closing thoughts anything you'd like to finish up with before we before we end uh I wish that I had more to say about your channel because there are only a few videos that I'm able to watch without like right. spoiling myself for certain albums. But I do love your energy and like the way that you're something that I'm super jealous of is that you're able to just speak your mind as you're thinking about it mm. because that's part of why the voiceovers came in for me, right? Is because I need some time to, <laughs> to get my <laughs> thoughts together. Um, but you can just do it on the spot. I'm really impressed by that. Um, and this whole conversation. It took me a, a while to, to feel settled in, but you've really helped a lot. So, so thank oh, you good. for that. I'm glad. Thank yeah. you, Pat. That makes me feel nice. Thank you. <laughs> I think you've got a wonderful channel. You've got a wonderful community. I, so many people in my community talk about you, praise you, love you. Keep... Oh, same for you. I love whenever anyone mentions you. I'm like, oh, I love Bob. You know, <laughs> great. <laughs> great overlap. Keep doing what you're doing. I, I, I think, I mean, yeah. That's all there's to it. I think too, if I was going to give any personal advice, we kind of talked about this before, but just don't burn yourself out. Fuck, especially with the editing. Now I'm all like worried. Oh, Path, she's working too hard. Editing too long. I can't. <laughs> but uh, what was, oh, and I just totally lost my train of thought. Another old man moment. Nice. That's okay. Nice. It'll come back. It'll come back. But yeah, love the channel. I hope, I hope. I hope it blows. Well, no, I don't hope it blows up because we don't want you to blow up. We want you to steadily, gradually. I hope both of us have just very yeah. uh, slow and steady ebbs and flows, manageable <laughs> growth rate. Manageable, um, <laughs> manageable. Although I do hope you get uh, twelve thousand Patreons tomorrow. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, there has been like a a joke that I've been saying since day one, which is like I'll delete my channel at a million subscribers. So. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> Challenge extended, huh? A million. <laughs> that is weird. The idea of thinking about like, like every now and then with Fantano, right? Like he's got one point whatever million, and Kevin and Connor. It's like three million. Is it three million? It's just, it's just fucking insane. And I think <laughs> what what makes me not want that is at that size at that point, you basically you can't interact with your community anymore. It's yeah. It becomes so much it's too much and it, uh, you essentially have to just instead of interacting you have to build a wall and that makes me sad i don't want to do that yeah so we'll we'll just enjoy what we have now yes. enjoy right now today as as he says yes yes <laughs> that's I, that's beautiful advice that's a great place to end everybody who's watching thank you so much i hope you enjoyed it i hope i didn't ruin it by talking too much because i doubt a lot but <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it's been great. <laughs> Good. Thank you so much, Pat. And uh, we all look forward to more of your videos. And for everybody who is watching, take care. And we will see you soon.